James Maxwell, Dr. Ginger Hamster on the Twitter and Minds.com. Interesting story out of the United Kingdom in the sun. Rape, liar, woman, made up sex attack claims against 15 men and sent innocent man to jail for seven years. That's right. Gemma Beal, 25, at Southwark Crown Court is charged with four counts of perjury and four counts of perverting the course of justice. Let's keep in mind that she's just being accused of making these things up. The trial is still going on. But here are the facts of the case. Lying Gemma Beale, 25, made these allegations over three years. But the claim is that they were grotesque inventions jurors heard in the case. She claimed she was attacked at a pub and outside her home and gang raped in the street. Beal said she was raped by nine men and sexually assaulted by six. All but one were strangers. Beal's first allegation was against Mahad Kasim, who had given her a lift home after a night out. He was charged with rape and jailed for seven years. But in the case, prosecutor John Price said, quote, that was a wrongful conviction. Mahad Kasim was innocent. The person responsible for the grave injustice was the defendant through her false allegation and perjured evidence. She maintains that falsity still. Mr. Price says it was inherently improbable. Beale was attacked so many times and so frequently. He added each of her reports was entirely False. Remember, the case is going on right now. This is what she is accused of. Now, from what we know about rape, in particular about stranger rape, is that it's a very rare occurrence. Uh, we're talking about the guy grabbing a woman from behind a bush and that sort of thing. Doesn't very, it doesn't happen very often. Unfortunately, most of the rapes that are reported are people that are already known to the victim. So this is unusual in that sense, and, and so many times... As well. The story continues. In July 2012, Beale claimed she was sexually assaulted by four men with a piece of barbed wire in an alley. But jurors in the case were shown CCTV of her walking home alone that night. Her injuries were self inflicted, the court was told. In September 2013, Beale reported a sex assault by two men outside her home. Neither were ever identified. Two months later, she reported a gang rape by eight men. One of those uh, she identified, Luke Williams, was held on bail for two years. Mr. Williams yesterday told how Beale had invited him to have sex with her at a party while her girlfriend was downstairs. He said, quote, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't want her to feel rejected, but I really didn't find her attractive. End of quote. Beale is of Bedfont, West London. And she denies perjury and perverting justice. The trial at Southwark Crown Court continues. So the allegations that we have here is this woman uh, had many, many, many cases of stranger rape reported to the police. And she's alleged here to have lied about every single one of them. Which brings us to a sidebar in the story in the UK Sun. How common are false rape allegations? Well, the Sun cites the 2011 Crown Prosecution Service landmark study into the so-called false allegations of rape and domestic violence. So I did a little digging on the internet, and I came across something called the UK's Independent Fact-Checking Charity. False rape allegations, serious but rare, in quotes. The quote is, 0.3% of rape accusations are false. But in this landmark study, the CPS reviewed 121 cases of a purportedly false allegation of rape and other sexual assaults between January 2011 and May of 2012. Of those, 35 resulted in a prosecution of either wasting police time or perverting the court of ju course rather of justice. This 35 figure compares with a total of 5,651 total prosecutions for rape over the same period. We look a little farther down, however, in the story, and this is where it gets interesting. The numbers are presented. You can draw your own conclusions. The Ministry of Justice in the UK found that about 8 to 11% of rape allegations in England and Wales are false. However, it also added concrete evidence about the rate was limited and confused. 
And what exists is based on perceptions of practitioners and research involving small samples. But here's where they pull out the numbers for you to decide. So these are figures from the Ministry of Justice in the United Kingdom. Over the last three years, the crime survey estimated that around 60 to 90,000 people are victims of rape in any one year. Meanwhile, the police record uh, record 15,700 offenses of rape each year. So you can see there a big difference in this could be the numbers that are brought up about how many people do not report it for whatever reason to police. But we do know 15,700 offenses were recorded by police in that year. One offender, of course, can be responsible for multiple offenses. That's uh, serial rapists, and that, that is a big problem, obviously. So 15,000, call it 16,000, make the numbers easy. 16,000 offenses were reported. 3,000 people were prosecuted, resulting in about 1,000 convictions. Now, this comes down to how you define things. I think most people, without knowing the definition, if somebody said a false rape report, likely would think to themselves, made up out of whole cloth, out of thin air, just made it up like this Gemma uh, lady is accused of. Just made it up, reported to police for whatever reason. So they're saying that's 8 to 10, 12% somewhere in that neighborhood. However, what about the cases that, are, that don't result in a conviction? Why would that be? Well, the feminists say it's the rape culture because rape is just assumed to be uh, okay and it's not a big deal and whatever, that sort of thing. When in fact, it could be that, uh, you know, reasonable adults sitting on a jury in a courtroom can't make the decision who was telling the truth. For you see, we already talked about the, the uh, rarity of stranger rape. So one can assume most of these are people they already know. And you get down to a he said, she said situation. I think most people would agree something happened. Something definitely happened between these two people, between the victim and the accused. Something happened. Somebody, they had sex, likely. So it's up to the jury to decide. Is he telling the truth or is she telling the truth? And that's where we get a little bit fuzzy. How do you know? There's only two people in the room usually, right? They're each telling a slightly different story. One is crying rape and the other one is saying, wait a minute, it was consensual and whatever. So what are we to make of these numbers? 15, 16,000 offenses reported and only 1,000 convictions. It seems to me that whether most of these 15,000 reports, they might not be false in the sense of made up out of whole cloth. What could it be? Could it be a mistaken identity? Could it be a misunderstanding between a couple of drunk people having sex? We don't know. But the conviction rates and the report rate are wildly different, at least in the United Kingdom. And you'll find similar statistics in the United States. This is where Lacey Green and the feminists get their number. 90% of rapists never see a day in jail. Well, Lacey really should be saying 90% of people accused of rape never see a day in jail because they're not convicted. Now, I don't know the reason why they're not convicted. I'm not even going to speculate more than I've ha I already have. But obviously, there's something going on when the numbers between convictions and accusations are so far apart. Links below. James Maxwell, thanks for listening.